Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the topic predictive parser or LL1 parser in compiler design. There are five steps in this uh, parser. First step is to eliminate the left recursion and second step is to apply left factoring if there are common prefixes in the given grammar productions. And third step is to find the first and follow. Fourth step is to construct the parser table using first and follow. And finally, parse the given input string using the parser table constructed. So, our first step is we have to eliminate the left recursion. So, let us consider the example grammar given here for understanding this concept. We have three productions E tends to E plus T or T. T tends to T star F or F and F tends to E or ID. So, we have already seen the elimination of left recursion concept in our previous lectures. So, now let us recall the concept. If the production is of the form A tends to A alpha or beta, then it is said to be left recursive. That is, if the left hand side variable is similar to the first symbol in the right hand side, then it is left recursive. We can note that here in left hand side we have A, right hand side first symbol is also A. So, to eliminate this left recursion, we have to rewrite this production in the form of two rules. First rule is A tends to beta A dash and second rule is A dash tends to alpha A dash or epsilon. Now, let us write the grammar without left recursion. So, first we have to consider the production number 1. Here in the left hand side we have E. Right hand side first symbol is also E. So, this is left recursive. Considering the second one, left hand side is T. Right hand side first symbol is also T. So, this is also left recursive. Third one is not left recursive because left hand side and first symbol in the right hand side is not similar. So, now uh, let us uh, consider the rule number 1. So, here uh, according to this rule, beta is T alpha is plus t and a is e. So, a, a tends to beta a dash. So, we can write it as e tends to beta is t and instead of a dash we can write e dash. And second rule is a dash tends to alpha a dash or epsilon. So, that means e dash tends to alpha here is plus t and a dash is e dash or epsilon. So, apply the same technique for the second production. So, here in beta's place we have f, alpha is star f and a is t. So, a tends to beta a dash means we can write it as t tends to beta is f and instead of a dash we can introduce t dash and t dash tends to alpha a dash or epsilon. Alpha is star f and a dash is t dash here or epsilon. Next third production we write it as it is without any change. So, this is the grammar after the elimination of left recursion. The next step is we have to find the left factoring if there are common prefixes. So, we have to apply left factoring only if there are common prefixes in the right hand side of the productions. So, here we have only one production. In this case, we have plus t dash and epsilon, but we do not have any common prefix between these two. Here also single production, here also no common prefix between uh, star f t dash and epsilon. Here also no common prefix. So, if there is no common prefix, then we can skip the left factoring. Now, let us go for the third step that is computing first and follow. So, for finding first and follow, we have already seen the rules in our previous lecture. So, let us apply those rules. So, so for easy computation, let us consider only the uh, variables which is having terminal as the first symbol in the right hand side. So, here we need to include the production f tends to E R I D. So now we will start with the first production. So in the right hand side both are variables. So we go for the second production. So first symbol is terminal. So according to the rule in first, first of any terminal is terminal itself. So in the first of E dash we include plus because plus is a terminal. So first of plus will be plus. Next we have epsilon as one more production here. So, whenever we have the form of production A tends to epsilon, then we have to include the epsilon in the first of A. So, here we have E dash tends to epsilon. So, we have to include epsilon in E dash. So, first of E dash is plus and epsilon. Next, we have T tends to FT dash. Both are variables. So, we will see it later. Next, we have T dash tends to star FT dash. So, here star is the terminal. So, first of star will be star only. So, you, you can write in first of t dash star and then we have epsilon. So, since t dash tends to epsilon, we have to include the epsilon into t dash. So, first of t dash is star and epsilon. Next, we have f tends to e or id. Here, 
first symbol is terminal so first of terminal is uh, terminal so we can include open parenthesis as it is and then we have one more production that is id id is also a terminal so first of id is id so include id also so first of f is open parenthesis and id next we move to the production t tends to ft dash so whenever we have the uh, productions that is continuous uh, variables in the right hand side of the productions then we have to find the first of first symbol so first symbol here is f so first of f is already we have found that is open parenthesis and id so since uh, no epsilon here so we can add it as it is next we have to find the first of e so here first symbol is t first of t is open parenthesis and id so include it as it is so thus we have computed the first of all the variables next we have to find the follow so for follow always we have to include dollar sign in the start symbol so we have included that next we have to check for these variables in the right hand side of the grammar which is without left recursion so here we have e here so whenever we find the follow of the variable which is not lying in the end of the production then we have to find the first of its next symbol so the next symbol of e is uh, close parenthesis so first of close parenthesis is close parenthesis because it is your terminal so follow of e now has dollar and close next follow of e dash we have here first production and second production both are uh, in both the cases e dash is coming at the end so if the variable is coming at the end then we have to find the follow of its left hand side so follow of e and e dash so follow of e is dollar and close e dash is also the same next t so here t we have uh, here and here so in both the cases it is not coming at the end so we have to find the first of its next symbol so next symbol of t is e dash in both the cases so what is first of e dash it is plus and epsilon so according to the rule whenever we have uh, epsilon we have to eliminate the epsilon and consider only remaining terminals and then we have to find the follow of its left hand side that is e and e dash so follow of e, e and e dash are same that is dollar and close so follow of t is uh, plus dollar and close next we have to find follow of t dash so t dash we have here and here so in both the cases it is coming at the end of the production so we have to find the follow of left hand side that is follow of t and t dash so follow of t is plus dollar and close t dash is also the same next finally f so f is coming in these two productions it is not coming at the end of the production so find the first of next symbol so next symbol is of f is t dash in both the cases so first of t dash is star and epsilon so whenever we have epsilon we have to include only the remaining terminals and then follow the and then find the follow of left hand side so follow of t and t dash is here uh, plus dollar and close so we include plus dollar and close here so thus we have computed the first and follow for the grammar next let us construct the predictive parser table so in this table rows are the variables that is the left hand side and columns are the terminals available in the right hand side so apart from the terminals in the grammar we also include the dollar sign to uh, parse the given string and epsilon we should not consider in the terminal list now to construct the table we have to find the first of uh, first symbol in the right hand side so here e tends to t e dash so we have to find first of t so what is first of t open parenthesis and id so in the row e and the column open parenthesis and id we have to include the production e tends to t e dash that is here in the column open parenthesis and in the column id we include e tends to t e dash next consider the second production first symbol is plus here it is a terminal first of any terminal is terminal so first of plus is plus so in the row e dash and the column plus we include the production e dash tends to plus t e dash we will consider the epsilon later next we have t tends to f t dash so we have to find first of f first of f is open parenthesis and id so in the row t and open parenthesis and id we have to include the production t tends to f t dash so in open parenthesis and id next we have t dash tends to star f t dash so star is terminal here so first of star is star so in row t dash and column star we can include t dash tends to star f t dash next last one f tends to e so here first symbol is open parenthesis it is a terminal so first of open parenthesis will be open parenthesis so we have to write in 
f row uh, column open parenthesis f tends to e next we have id that is also one production so it is also a terminal so first of id is id so in row f and column id we write f tends to id so next we have to consider the epsilon productions here so whenever we have epsilon then we have to find the follow of its left hand side so in this case we have to find follow of e dash and follow of t dash so what is follow of e dash dollar and close so near row e dash and column dollar and close we have to introduce the production e dash and epsilon that is uh, e dash tends to epsilon so near dollar and close so we have to write e dash tends to epsilon here and e dash tends to epsilon here also next we have here epsilon so we have to find the follow of t dash follow of t dash is plus dollar and close so in all these three columns we have to write the production t dash tends to epsilon in the row t dash so here in plus we write t dash tends to epsilon and in close we write t dash tends to epsilon and in dollar also we write t dash tends to epsilon so thus we have constructed the parser table next we have to parse the input string now last step is to parse the input string given so we have provided with the input string id plus id into id we have three columns here stack input and output so in the stack always we will be having dollar and start symbol as the first row so here uh, start symbol is e and then input will be whatever given input id plus id into id and it will be attached with the dollar sign now uh, let us pass the given input string so we have to use the parse table to pass the input string so always we have to check for the top of the stack and compare the uh, top variable with the first symbol in the input so we have e here and id here so compare it at the parser table so e and id in the row e and in the column id we have the production e tends to te dash so write it in the output now in the place of e that is e derives te dash means in the place of e we can write te dash so we have to write it in reverse such that t comes in the top of the stack so in e we write it as e dash and t next in the input we have as it is id plus id into id dollar so next we have to compare t and id so t and id what is there in the place of t and id we have t tends to ft dash so write it in the output so instead of t we can write ft dash so write in reverse so dollar e dash t dash and f input is same id plus id into id dollar next we have to compare f and id f and id is f tends to id so write it in the output so in the uh, place of f we can write id so dollar e dash t dash since only one uh, symbol we can write as it is id id plus id into id dollar is the input so next id and id so whenever we have the same symbol in the top of the stack as well as uh, first position in the input then we have to remove that uh, particular symbol so we are removing id from the stack as well as from the input so write the remaining thing so dollar e dash t dash in stack and plus id into id dollar in the input so next we have to compare t dash and plus so t dash and plus it is t dash tends to epsilon so whenever we have epsilon it will nullify that left hand side so t dash will be, will be nullified and we will be having only dollar e dash and here plus id into id dollar so we have to compare e dash and plus now e dash and plus is e dash tends to plus t e dash so write it in the output e dash tends to plus t e dash so we can write uh, instead of e dash plus t e dash in reverse so dollar e dash t and plus here also plus id into id dollar so plus and plus is same so whenever the same uh, terminals occur in both at the top of the stack as well as in the input then we can strike it and we can have remaining dollar e dash t and id into id dollar so we have to compare t and id t and id is t tends to ft dash so in the place of t we can write ft dash in reverse so dollar e dash t dash and f input is id into id dollar next compare f and id f and id is f tends to id 
so uh, in the place of f we can write id dollar e dash t dash and id here id into id dollar so since same uh, symbol in the top of the stack as well as in the first position of the input remove it from the stack and input and we have dollar e dash t dash and then uh, star id dollar what is t dash and uh, star t dash and star is t dash tends to star f t dash so we can instead of t dash we can write star f t dash in reverse so dollar e dash t dash f and star here star id dollar so same symbol at the top of the stack as well as uh, first position input so remove it from stack and input so remaining we have dollar e dash t dash f and id dollar so f and id f and id is f tends to id so we can write instead of f id dollar e dash t dash id so id dollar so same symbol both in top of the stack and input so remove it from stack and input remaining we have dollar e dash t dash and only dollar here so when uh, t dash and dollar we have to compare t dash and dollar t dash and dollar is t dash tends to epsilon so we have to nullify the t dash so because if we have epsilon we have to nullify the left hand side so nullify t dash and we have dollar e dash and dollar so we have to uh, compare e dash and dollar e dash and dollar is also e dash tends to epsilon so we can uh, nullify e dash also now so e dash is also nullified and finally we have only dollar and dollar so if you are having only dollar uh, in both the top of the stack as well as the input then the string is considered as accepted and it is successfully passed so thus we have seen the concept of predictive parser in this uh, lecture thank you